Hi, this is Phil at Simply Rhino, and today I'm going to take a look at some more of the presentation and documentation enhancements in Rhino version 6. In the previous video, I looked at the new and enhanced display modes and also rendering with the real time ray traced viewport. Let's now take a look at a few new features that help us create presentations and documentation much more efficiently in version 6. Firstly, the view capture to file command is much improved. I can choose whether to display things like grid, world axes and seaplane axes. I can choose the option of a transparent background. And most important, I can choose the size of the final image. I can do this by either the size of the image, the aspect ratio of the image or the scale of the image. So here I'm going to keep the viewport aspect ratio and I'm going to increase the scale to 4 meaning that I'll have an image that is over 5,500 pixels wide. Once I have the parameters set I can hit OK and I can choose the location where I want to save the file and the large image will be written out very quickly. If I then go into an image editor like Photoshop I can open the file and if I zoom into full size you'll see we get a really nice clean high quality image. If I choose the pen display I can also produce large images and I have an additional feature now in that I can choose to scale up the drawing thickness meaning that the thickness of the lines will scale up with the increased size of the image. So again if I go to Photoshop, look at this large file, zoom in, you'll see that my line weight is now commensurate with the size of the image. You'll also see that the pen display is much cleaner in version 6. Finally, the view capture to file command also gives us a means to save out the ray traced images again at any particular size. When this display mode is enabled, I'll see that I can set the maximum number of passes that I want to create and as well, of course, as the scale of the image. Here I'll just render out at viewport resolution and I'll limit the number of passes to 500. Once again, I'm prompted to save the image and I'll now see a progress window to let me know how the rendering is going on. Whilst the ray traced image is being saved out, you'll see that Rhino pauses the real time render engine. So once the progress bar has completed, I can of course go into Photoshop and open up the saved ray traced image. An exciting new feature in version 6 is snapshots. Snapshots effectively bundles together the existing named views, named positions and named seaplanes commands but also saves the display state, materials, lighting, environments and any mesh modifiers such as curve piping or shut lining. Let's have a look at snapshots in action. So first of all I'm going to save this perspective view here as a snapshot. So in my snapshots panel I'll use the save icon and I'll save this as snapshot 01. I can choose here the attributes that I want to save and then I'm now going to make some changes to the model. So I'll pick the fastener here and I'll move this and I'll pick this casting here and move that also. Then in the perspective view I'll change the view and I'll also change the materials.
and then I'll save this as a second snapshot. If I then make sure that the perspective view is active, I can then switch back to snapshot 01 and you'll see that I can shuttle between the two views here. Let's now have a look at a more involved example of snapshots. You'll see that I now have nine saved states here and one of the features I can turn on is animation. This lets me smoothly transition between one snapshot and the next. So you can see here that I can animate an exploded view. Another thing that I can do with snapshots is to save out the snapshots as a presentation animation or slideshow. And I can choose how I want to present this and how long I want to show each snapshot for. And in this case, I've chosen full screen and chosen to have each snapshot displaying for one second after the animations have been completed. So this is a really nice way of being able to present, for example, a construction sequence or a number of views or colorways on, the, on a particular product or in an architectural context, a number of views, for example, around a building. One of the commands that many people rely on that has been much improved for version 6 is Make 2D. Let's just have a look how Make2D behaves now on a simple curved object like this scraper. First of all, we have a slightly revised interface whereby we see a little preview of the projection um, or the view and also what happens when we turn on things like hidden lines and tangent edges. And Make2D is now much faster. You'll see that there's a progress bar at the bottom of the screen. And the quality of line work that Make2D creates now is much improved. So you can see we have very, very clean curves from my simple object here. It's really, however, when we get into larger projects and perhaps into an architectural context where we start to see the benefits of the improvements in Make2D. So let's now take a look at Make2D in an architectural context. So here I have a file with a couple of building envelopes, some surrounding context and some figures. Now, all of the content of this file is referenced so there is no geometry inside of this file but if we were to realize the weight of all that geometry this file would be about 250 megabytes. So the file contains Rhino geometry and also some meshes which are these figures. Now in version 5 the make2d command didn't produce 2D outlines from meshes and this is something that Make2D in version 6 now handles. So I'm going to go to the Make2D drawing command, I'm going to select all of the geometry inside of this file and I'm going to choose a third angle projection. I'm going to push my geometry onto new layers. I'm going to choose to render out tangent edges. And I'm also going to produce a scene silhouette, which is another new feature. I'm going to group the um, output and the top layer of this is going to be called Make 2D. I'm going to let this complete. You'll see the progress bar at the bottom and with a file uh, of this size this will take just short of three minutes to produce the four views in vector line drawing format. So we'll just let this progress and we'll skip to the end of the process.
Okay, so Make 2D has now completed and that's taken just a little over two and a half minutes. So I'm just going to now turn off all of the layers that uh, uh, of the actual model itself and let's concentrate on the Make 2D output. So you can see here that Make 2D does a good job of creating outlines from the meshes. And let's just have a look at some of the detail of the actual Rhino geometry here. You can see this is very crisp. And one of the other features we can see here is the silhouette. And I can visualize this now by using this print display icon here. And I can choose whether the print display is turned on or off. So you can see here, if I just turn this back on again, you can see this thicker silhouette line uh, appearing here. So all in all, we get much cleaner line work now from our Make 2D command. We can include mesh objects and the Make 2D command now works much more quickly. And of course, we have the progress bar at the bottom of the screen so we can verify that Make 2D is uh, actually in operation. So that's about all I wanted to cover in this video. Please feel free to leave any comments below and if you found this video useful, please hit the like button. To keep up with the latest news on version 6 and other Rhino related topics, please subscribe to this channel. Thanks very much for watching and I'll catch up with you again in the next video.